So data sampling, it's um, basically a processor. In the last session, we discussed the different components of the collector. We, got, we saw that the receiver is getting data, the processor is processing it, and the exporter, exporter is sending it. So we are talking about the processor out of the open telemetry collector country. So it's not in the core of, of, open, uh, of the collector, it's the, in the contrib part. So you will need to use the contrib um, um, uh, image that you're using. And the idea here is that when we are getting a trace, a whole trace, we can then make a decision on, the, on that. It probably means that you want to have in your SDK 100% sampling, meaning that you're collecting all the traffic. Again, you don't have to. So imagine that uh, you're the collector and you're starting to get spans. So you're starting to get spans in a random way. Uh, there isn't any order to them. Um, and there isn't any uh, um, certain defined gap between the spans. So if you have a trace composed out of 10 spans, nobody guarantees that you're getting the spans in a, in a specific order. And the time difference between each and one of them could vary. The reason that you don't control the order could very much relate to batching and buffering. So if um, two SDKs are collecting the data and each one of them have a different timer of a different amount of uh, um, um, buffering uh, configuration, then you get it in, in, in order that you can't predict. So what we are doing in the tail sampling, we are basically accumulating the spans. We are saying, okay, I want to wait um, one minute, for instance, before I'm taking a decision on, on a trace. So I'm going to look at the first span per trace ID, wait a minute, and then look back and say, okay, this is a trace, now let's take a decision. And we would see in a second that um, it's very simple when we're doing a single collector, when we have just one instance of the collector, and we're looking at multiple instances of the collector, things are starting to be a bit more tricky, but not, not something that we can't handle. So um, the way that it looks is we have the SDK sending data to the open telemetry collector. And the first thing that we need to say to the tail, tail sampling uh, uh, processor is how much time you're going to wait before you take a decision. As you can see, the default is 30 seconds. You can change it to whatever you want. And it's going to store them by default in memory. That means that your open telemetry collector is accumulating data in memory. Um, we're exposed to data loss if the container fails, and we're exposed to out of memory exceptions um, if we're getting too much uh, memory stored. This is why we can uh, um, set a limit to the amount of traces that are going to be collected to uh, uh, in a single open telemetry collector instance. And for in this instance, we have uh, 50,000. Um, this is going to help you determine when to decide. And once, once you, do, and once you define that, to not exceed the memory. So 30 minutes, 30 seconds has passed. Now we look at the whole trace. And now we have this list of um, decisions that we can take. We can, uh, we can say always sample if we choose to. Actually, I don't see much value using the, uh, um, the both the, to, to use this processor if you're having like always sample, but you can do that. You can use the latency one. This is great to make sure that you're collecting stuff that are um, taking too long, that you're having performance issues. If you have like specific um, SLOs or specific uh, and yeah, specific SLOs, uh, you have to respond within one second. So every trace that is exceeding one second, I wanna know about it. And the way that we define latency is by um, the maximum minus the minimum time. It's not going to take a specific span. Um, the second one is if you are looking for a specific number. So if you're looking for a status code, um, over 
over an equal uh, 500, basically any HTTP code that it has failed, uh, I want to collect it. Uh, uh, probability, um, just you know, a ratio, 1%, 10%, 50%, whatever you want. Status code, if the, uh, um, if the span, the trace, uh, add fail. So you would mostly you'd see the usage with error. So if you have a status code of error, I do want to log it. String attribute is the same as the numeric attribute, just with uh, uh, string values. And another important one is rate limiting. So you can say, um, I don't want to get over 100 trace a second. Uh, that's how much I can ingest. Um, we would talk in, in, in later today about protecting your database from having too much rights. Um, this could help you protect your, your database. Um, okay, so uh, um, this is how you would define it. We would uh, see exactly how it looks in the configuration. The main problem that I'm having with this architecture is that we have a single collector instance. We're talking about high scale, single instance is never scale. Um, so um, the problem here would be that if we are having um, multiple open telemetry collectors, that means that we have a load balancer. So our SDK is going to send the data through a load balancer. And the load balancer is going to spread all the spans across the different instances. That means that each collector is going to get part of the trace. So we can't take a decision on the whole trace. This is a problem. We don't want to do that because basically that means that we can't do tail sampling. And now it means that we need to have two layers of collector. So the open telemetry SDK would send it, uh, the spans of traces to the load balancer. However, the load balancer won't send it directly to the open telemetry, the open telemetry collector with all the definition of how to export it to Elasticsearch or, or whatever. Basically what we are saying, we're going to say, hey, I'm going to have a very thin simple open telemetry collector, which is going to act as the load balancer. And the load balancer is a processor by itself. So what the load balancer uh, open telemetry can do, it's going to get the traces, get the spans, and have a list of open telemetry collector to export, it, to export them to. The load balancer is aware on the trace ID. So it's going to take the trace ID and divide it by the end collector's instances that it has. And it's going to spread them across those open telemetry collectors. So the logic would consist between the different load balancers. So it doesn't really matter to which load balancer you are going to send the spin. It is always going to send the same trace ID to the same instance. And then we have two layers. Layer number one, act as a load balancer that is aware on the trace ID. And it, the only thing that's going to do, it's going to receive spans, decide where to send them to and send them to there. And then the second layer would be the open telemetry collector that is going to do whatever it used to do, but now it's going to get the whole trace and manage that. You can find all different of uh, edge cases and use cases that you're going to have problem with. Um, when you're doing deployment, you may have some data loss. Now, when you're deciding to scale, you may have uh, partial traces. There are a few issues with that. You could solve them with more advanced stuff. But I think overall, um, this is what I would go with if I would to, to, spin, to spin it up in, in, as an in-house solution. So, I don't know, every few weeks that you're going to have some changes with your open telemetry collector, you are you may lose a few traces even there or to have traces that are incomplete. I would say that it's worth uh, not going with the extra step and making it even more complicated. Just to give you uh, an example, like how uh, um, the configuration looks. So 
Um, the load balancer is an exporter, so uh, it needs to export uh, in a specific protocol. Here, I chose to use the OTLP, the Open Telemetry Protocol, and we, I'm using here um, four static host names. You can do host name, IPs, DNSs, uh, whatever you want. You can do that. You can also have a dynamic list if you want, um, but that's going to, to introduce a bit more complexity. So um, again, you can have two layers. Um, the first one is a load balancer that aware of the trace ID, and then the collector as you would want it to.